Luffy's true power, Luffy's allies unite, end of series, let's talk about it. So in this scene, we see a gather up of all of uh, Luffy's royal allies. So we got Dalton from Sakura Kingdom, Vivi from Alabasta, Shirahoshi from Ryuga Kingdom, and Rebecca from Dressrosa. What do you think of this gathering? Well, as you said, we've seen all of them meet and I think what has been established here is that, you know, they've all met and they've all established that they all know Luffy and have friend relationships with Luffy and the Straw Hats. Well, I think this is going to be sort of set up for, you know, a lot later down the line. You know, if we think about, I mean, they're obviously not going to go against the world government, but let's say, you know, end of series when the One Piece has been found, the final war is about to get started it's likely that they're going to go against the world government and join Luffy's side. You know, if you think about the the Grand Fleet, you know, the current fleet that is under the Straw Hats, firstly, they were formed really quickly. If you think about it, in, in just one arc, they were introduced, they were developed, and they were joined into, you know, the, what is now the Grand Fleet, which... Yeah, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I thought of it as uh, quite sudden. Like, I have no way to multiply it as a crew. Yeah, I mean... That quickly... Throughout the entire series, they slowly grew up to nine members, and then suddenly, within the next arc, they have over five thousand. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It, yeah, it almost seems. Rush. Yeah, it almost seems like bad writing to suddenly give the main character so much power. But if you think if you think about it from the perspective of this is just the beginning, and the fleet will be much larger by the end of the series, then it makes sense to do this one quite quickly so that you have time to develop what will become the end of series grand fleet. Okay, so what you're saying, basically, it might look like a rush, but this is basically just the beginning, so it's like insignificant compared to how it's going to end up, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you even think about the the ones who are part of the fleet, I mean, they're stronger now, but they're obviously not enough by themselves to be a Pirate King's fleet. Yeah, in this scene, we saw, you know, they're all, all of them meeting and finding out that they're all allies with Luffy, so they now have contact with each other and can call each other for help. Whenever, whenever it's needed and if we uh, think about the way Luffy is he's not one to ask for help is he like if he didn't have Law or the Grand Fleet he would have went against any of the Yonko by himself and just his crew alone and that would have they would have been wasted yeah just and that, that's that's why within the story you need ways to give him different allies without him asking for it so in the same way that the Grand Fleet aren't Luffy's not like the proper leader of the thing, even though he is. The the fleet members they're like brothers, so they'll they'll help each other out. And if they see Luffy's in trouble, they'll all go to help him. In the same way, now you have the royals who are all know each other and you know have a mutual understanding. And now if they see Luffy in trouble, they'll go help him. But obviously, it's not gonna happen now. But it'll be end of series for now. They're still affiliated with the world government. Yeah, and, I mean, at the beginning, after it's all Vivian that I didn't think they'll be brought up again like this, in this way. Yeah, it's basically planting uh, seeds early on so that, you know how we said what happened in Dressrosa with the Grand Fleet forming seemed quite quick, but obviously when it comes to the final Grand Fleet, we can't have that thought that, you know, it happened out of nowhere. That's why Oda is planting seeds early on so that it comes together slowly. So that we have here, we had, you know, all the royals meeting, and then if you think about what happened in Hokkaid Island with Katakuri who... I mean, he's extremely strong and he has a lot of respect for Luffy now. And other than even Katakuri, there's a lot of other big man pirates who are on friendly terms with Luffy. You know, there's Peckhams, there's Brulee, there's Pudding, there's a few others. So let's say in some time in the future, big man gets taken down uh, and then the big man pirates probably will split up and one of the factions will, will be basically under Katakuri. And within that will be all the pirates within the big man pirates who are friendly with Luffy, so Peckham and all of them would be with Katakuri. And okay. they'll, yeah, it kind of makes sense though, doesn't it? I mean, Katakuri basically had some respect for Luffy in that fight, and obviously we saw Luffy had, had the same respect for Katakuri as well, so they kind of had that connection yeah. and so, understanding in it, so it's not impossible, it's not, some, it's not surprising if that yeah. were to happen. You know, in the same way that in the scene, it wasn't, you know, the royals didn't, talk about, you know, oh, we'll join Luffy and, uh, or anything. They just met and it's just a plot point that it was left there to be de- developed later. In that same regard, Katakuri gained respect for Luffy and that was a plot point that could be developed later. So just just threads that being left there so that 
in the future all the different factions can come together under Luffy when he eventually does become Pirate King and the final battle, the final war is about to take place. I mean other than them, they already have plenty of other different allies. You've got the current Grand Prix, you've got the Royals now, you've got all the Samurais of Wano who are probably going to join them by the end of the arc. You've got the Minx already and then we have the Warlord system which is probably going to get abolished soon so... Uh, about that, uh, we have a video explaining how the Warlord system is going to be replaced by a so-called new weapon. Go check it out, the link is at the top of the screen. Yeah, so if it's abolished, likely that Boa Hancock and Buggy will join Luffy at some point. And other than them, we have, you know, people like Law and Kid who might, you know, not join the alliance, but at least fight on their side against the world government. There's also Marco, which is an interesting case. Yeah, so what about the rest of the Western nation? I mean, we call like Beej, for example. Do you think there's any chance of him helping Luffy out? I mean, they did have like a interaction in the Big Mom arc where they helped one another. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, technically we got even two members of his crew are uh, friendly with Shro Hats. You know, there's, uh, I, can't, I think his name is Ghetto or Ghetto and then Lola's sister. So they already have a good relationship and I'm actually, I'm thinking, I mean, since he, Luffy will be the Pirate King, I, I'm guessing by the end, obviously the Yonko will be taken down and pretty much every other big name pirate left at the end of the series, will probably join Luffy's side to fight the world government. So, most likely, any of the West generation who's left, they'll probably all join his side. Also, I want to mention uh, Marco and the Whitebeard Pirates, who Nekomoshi went to get him, but in the end, he couldn't. Marco said he can't come for his own reasons, and yeah, it almost seems like a waste of time to bring up Marco for him to not come and join the war now. So... There's either two things that can happen. Either Marco will somehow find his way to Wano and join the war with probably Weevil even coming as well. Or the other option is that this, you know, relationship with, with the Mix was brought up ju- as a plot point so that Marco can join at the end of the series when the fi- uh, the final war is about to take place. Yeah, I think obviously uh, Marco be Marco. I mean, he, his abilities are quite up there. So, I mean, in my opinion, I think the reason why they didn't hold that they didn't use him early on is he is a strong trump card he doesn't want to use the trump card that quick so it's probably going to be you know he's keeping it for a later stage like the final alliance for example yeah like i said before by the end of the series all the yonko will be gone and every other big time pirate who is left will join luffy's side and it'll be a true alliance under a pirate king and they'll fight the world government and it actually reminds me of you know what mihawk said in Marineford about what Luffy's true power actually is. What he actually said was, it's not a devil fruit or some cheap trick. One by one he turns the people around him into his allies. More than anyone else sailing the seas, that man possesses the most terrifying power. So his power is to basically to plant seeds. Um, yeah, I, mean, I guess you can look at that like that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, his power is to just gain allies everywhere he goes is sort of the power of a king to influence everyone around him onto his side. Wow. So everyone, yeah, so everyone, they start gaining a respect for him and they become kind of loyal. So without him asking, yeah, that's the power of the king now. He doesn't even have to ask his people. They basically fight out of their own will because they want to help him out. Anyway, guys, what do you guys think? How do you guys think uh, Luffy's final alliance will look like? Who's going to be with him and who's going to be against him? Comment down below, I want to know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. And don't forget to share the video to all your nakama, your senseis, your kohais and your senpais. Anime Talks 101, signing out.